Okay, um, welcome everybody. My name is Monsignor Perez. I am pastor of Our Lady Help of Christians Traditional Catholic Parish in Garden Grove, California. And with me is Sister Tadea. And um, this, I just wanted to make a little video, which people have been asking me about, um, for how to lay out the traditional vestments for, or lay out vestments for the traditional mass. Because um, I've seen a lot of things. Most people do a decent job, but a lot of times it looks like the pile of laundry in a dorm room, which is not exactly fitting for uh, the priest or our Lord before the celebration of the mass. So what I'm starting with then is how to build up the chalice. So we have a typical chalice here, typical pattern with the host on it. There are a couple little things there. Some of it might seem obvious. Some things are more traditional than others. Actually, the true old Roman practice was to put the cross, which you find in the center of many purificators, this is called the purificator, downward towards the chalice, and then the folded side towards the front. So that would be like this, push down a bit into it, and then the pattern with the host placed on top. Now, if you look at the front of this chalice, this chalice, like most, has a cross on the front of it. And not all chalices have it, but that indicates the front of the chalice. And you say, well, what difference does the front make? This is so after you consume the precious blood, you consume the purification, the, pur the yeah, purifications, the, the water you purify it with, the ablutions, I mean, rather, from the same spot so it washes away any remnants of the precious blood. So you would drink the ablutions and that's why we, we kind of like to know uh, where the front is. All right, so next on top of this goes the paw. Now, a, a correctly made and typical paw has a linen, 100% linen backing on it, um, as is the purificator and all things to do with the altar should be 100% linen. That's because our body, our Lord's body was wrapped in linen in the tomb. And so traditionally, anything that has to do with his body and blood is also made of pure linen as well, the altar cloth, the cork. All right, so that part, the linen part down towards what will eventually be the body of Christ. Next is the chalice veil. Now these are of various lengths and things. Some have crosses on front, some have them in the middle. But the idea is to lay that out so that it covers the chalice. You don't want it, you don't want to, you don't want it like sticking up in the front, because the symbolism of the veil is it represents the Jews, and the truth is hidden from their eyes. And so the, the chalice and everything under it is hidden from view to represent that. Lastly, we have what we call the the burst. And the burst holds the corporal, the corporal so named because it is the linen cloth upon which the body, the corpus of our Lord, rests um, at, during the Mass. Now, a couple things about that. Uh, you want to make sure the corporal is in a particular orientation. And what is that? So it's on the, it will be on the chalice, um, well, facing you like this. You carry it in this way. When you get to the altar, and start to arrange the, the chalice. This is first taken out, and the corporal is removed straight out like this, and then this is leaned up against something, um, the candlestick or something on the side. Now, the reason the orientation is there's a convention. So a priest normally will take out the corporal, and what he does is you go to the left, to the right, then and then down. So that, that is the convention. And it's pretty much automatic with any traditional priest that we, ju we just go left, right, up, down. And so in folding it, then we do the opposite. So we do the bottom up, then up, down, then the right part, then the left part. And this is put into the burst like that. Okay. So the burst is placed on the chalice, and now the chalice is completely built up. So moving on to the next part, the arrangement of the vestments. 
Uh, Sister Tadeus is somewhat of an artist when it comes to this, which is why I've asked her, of course, to make this video. Um, you have to do your best. Try to arrange them as neatly and as nicely as possible. Of course, not everyone can perform the same level of at the same level of skill as a as an as an artist. So we all, including myself, we have to just do our best when we're arranging. But this is kind of the ideal. Uh, the general principle when laying out the vestments is what ends up on top is the very first thing the, pr the priest puts on. So what's on the bottom is the very last thing. And they should be arranged in such a way that they are convenient for the priest to pick up and put on without having to figure out which side is up or, or that kind of thing. Okay, so that's why we have a convention. So we'll first start then with the chasuble. So a couple of things when you're setting out the chasuble, make sure that the ribbons underneath are uh, untied, obviously, because nothing like getting to the ribbons and want to tie them around yourself and they're already knotted up and you have to mess with that. Now you see how Sister has folded the, ch the back of the chasuble up. And the reason for that is, um, it is much easier that way to grasp that bundle there and place everything over your head and let the vestment fall to the back. It's easier when it's, it's folded up that way. Um, however, there are, there are some vestments that have a very, or just one sec, there are some vestments that have a very heavily encrusted style of embroidery and you can't fold them like that. So you will have to make do, you might have to just leave them unfolded to their full length. It, it depends on the vestment. Once again, we're using the Roman vestments here. If you're going to use Gothic vestments, then you have to make adaptations in this procedure. Like you'll have, they're much wider and you'll have to fold them inward or that kind of thing according to your style. We don't have any Gothic vestments here, so we use just the traditional Roman style. Okay, so the next thing then, so the last thing you put on is the um, chasuble. So then the next thing that goes on uh, will be the second last thing you, you put on is the stole. Now, as you see, once again, the part that is grasped by the priest, which is the neck part, is closest to him. You wouldn't put it further away or upside down or whatever. It's, it's made to simply grab, put around your neck. And so while there is much consideration as to the beautiful arrangement of the vestment, the, the first consideration is the practicality of it. Next we have then the maniple. Uh, a frequently made mistake when putting out the maniple is to put the um, part on the that goes on top of your arm, which is this part here, further away. Um, and why is that a mistake? Because this is most convenient to grab it here and, and put it on. So we have this in this direction. And now the cincture. There are many variations of this. Um, the important part is to have the loop towards the left and the other end with the tassel or knots or whatever you happen to have on your cincture towards the right because you pick it up by the end uh, that you're going to go on your right hand, which is the tassel end and you put it around your waist with the loop ending up on your left. Now, there are variations of this, not in the direction you put it, but some people have developed little designs that they like to make with the cincture, which is all very wonderful. We encourage creativity with that. Uh, I've seen people even be able to make in 
A M for Ave Maria out of the cincture. So, and this is this is like an M for Mary, if you want, just a practical way of doing it. Okay. So next. Next would be the sec the second vestment that the priest would put on, which is the alb. This is where I've seen the the most crimes committed by people laying out vestments because they they're overwhelmed by the alb and can't seem to make themselves arrange it properly. But you'll see how Sister does it, which is is uh, very, very good and very beautiful. See, with just a little care and patience, you can uh, you can do great things. Kind of like folding anything, I suppose. Laundry, you could just kind of slam it all together, or you you could take a little care with it and and fold it nicely. I think this is one of the parts that takes the most patience and artistry here. Once again, this is something to be aspired to. Uh, don't be frustrated if you can never really do this level of perfection when laying out. I mean, and I know I couldn't. If I spent all day on it, it wouldn't look like this. <laughs>
strikes me that it's a little bit like the art of arranging flowers, I suppose. Were I to arrange flowers, it would look like salad. Where a sister also does our flowers here for the altar, and they're quite beautiful. So look at that. You almost hate to ruin it by putting it on, but it's all, all for Jesus, and things should be done as well as possible. And then finally, the last vestment to go on the pile is the very first one the priest puts on. Now let me just, before you set that down, sister, let me show. Uh, there's a part that is cross, it might look the same thing, but normally it has a cross on it, some don't. But this is the part where the cross is best. Um, this is the part that will end up away from your back. This will be the part that is on your back. It's laid out so that the good side is up because what you do is you grab it by the corners, turn it around and put it on. Ours, if anybody likes a nice little tip out there, um, I've had ours made with ribbons with buttons through buttonholes to be removed for laundering. Laundering an amice with the strings attached is always uh, quite a challenge because they knot up in the wash and whatnot. So. All right, so that, that is it. How very, very beautiful. And we hope that this um, video will help some to make your, uh, make your celebration of the Mass more pleasing to God by the effort that goes into the preparation for it. So 